Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for subscribing. That helps me out a lot. And let's talk about what you can learn from your elders in bass fishing. What are you going to look back on in 10 or 20 years and say, man, I wish I would have done this differently. You know, I've got to fish with a lot of really good veterans of the game. I fished the FLW Tour for a couple of years. I got to fish with the likes of Larry Nixon, Randy Blockett, John Murray, a bunch of guys, a bunch of those just pure royalty when it comes to bass fishing, guys that have made a career and a long career out of the sport. And I've gotten to learn a lot. You know, I think the first thing that I took from Larry Nixon was fish your strengths and don't be afraid to go back to them immediately. We were fishing the Potomac River. We pulled up on a grass bed. He made about 10 casts with a chatterbait. Said, we pulled up here in practice, made five casts, caught two four pounders and left. I don't really know what's here. And after about 10 casts and not catch anything during the tournament on a chatterbait, he pulled out a Cinco and didn't set it down for the rest of the day. I think he made a top 10 in that tournament. And uh, it was just one of those learning experiences where patience, your strengths, not being afraid to change, don't try to catch your practice and just stay in one area all day, milk it for everything it's worth. So I've done that a lot in my career. I've got to learn from guys, like I said, John Murray. I also got to fish with, you know, with some of my old school guys back in my club days. And I got a really cool story about this guy that used to fish club tournaments against me. And he was the most feared guy. I mean, he would win about every other tournament, always cashing a check. And all he did was old school flip, you know, not the, the pitching style of today, but that old where you pull the line out, the old school style of flipping where you just drop the bait in. And this was down in Florida, so a flipping bite is pretty common down there. And he would just rule everything else out. Kept two flipping sticks in his boat and just flipped all day. And anyone that fished against this guy knows who I'm talking about. He just would crush everybody. And that was one of those things where it's like, let's not try to make this too complicated. Some days flipping is not gonna work. But most days, there is some type of flip and bite going on, especially when you're down in lakes like Florida, where you have a lot of shallow grass, you have a lot of shallow water. Flipping is just one of those deals. But it was like one of those things where you could really take that philosophy to anywhere in the country. You know, if you were going to the Barron River or Cumberland or some of those places that are in, are in you know, Kentucky, East Tennessee, you can always fish a jig there. There's always fish that are going to bite a jig, no matter what time of the year. And you can do that on a lot of lakes. You could go to the Mississippi River and always catch them on a swim jig. And you see those older guys, they just know from experience that you can catch them doing one thing. You just got to figure out how to make it work. That really takes the puzzle and simplifies it. You know, you can make 100 pieces out of a puzzle or you can break it down into three or four pieces and put it together the same way. And that's something that I've learned from those older guys. You know, patience is, is something that gets better the longer you've been doing it. You know, I always came into the sport thinking, when are these guys going to retire? When is Rick Klun? When are, when are these guys going to give it up? Because there's not enough spots for the up and coming guys. When are they going to give it up? And one of my buddies told me, you know, what makes these guys so much better than they were, you know, obviously maybe their skills have, have kind of degraded and things have kind of not been as good when it was in their thirties and forties, but they've become more patient. And there's a lot to say about that. You know, this time of year in the pre-spawn patience is probably my biggest asset. You know, when I find a group of fish, I know there's more than one there. I will start my tournament on that group and typically not leave until I about have my limit or three or four fish in the box. If I got to sit there for five or six hours, I will just getting a bite every hour or two because I know how that works. I know what those older guys have done and I know how they've learned that. And it's from just time and time, screwing up, doing good, screwing up, doing good. And that's camping, sitting and waiting is so important in this game. And when this water is cold like it is right now, it's hard to go and run all over the lake and figure it out because you're just not having a lot of actively feeding fish. So that's one thing I've taken from the older guys. There's a lot more that you can listen to those guys when they tell you things. And I wish being in my 30s now, I wish I could go back and change a lot of things that I did earlier on in my life that was just plain stupid. But that's bass fishing. That's how it goes. So good luck to you guys and I'll see you on the water.